Let's see how we can apply the idea, the idea that impulse changes momentum of an object. Uh, here I have a um, frightening um, situation set up on the board. I hope that you have never been in such a situation. Uh, at home, a, a tall building is on fire. And um, you see that the person up there in the window um, is jumping out of the window to, to hopefully save his life. Um, and uh, down below the building, there's no one standing there. As the, as, the, as the person is falling down, as he is getting, getting faster and faster and faster, you could say that his momentum is increasing. And if this is a tall building and, and he has a large mass, uh, or with just a regular mass of a regular person, uh, the momentum of the person just before he hits the ground is going to be quite quite a lot, quite a lot. Of course, after he, the, the person hits the ground, his momentum or her momentum is going to be zero. No momentum at all. When the velocity is zero, um, the momentum is going to be also zero. So the person, at, at the moment the person hits the ground, the force by which the ground is, is pushing on the person is going to um, give the object, give the person a really, really large impulse because it's going to basically change all of that momentum it had before all the way down to zero. So we can say uh, that, that the, the person went through a large change in momentum. Uh, its speed before the person hit the ground was large. Now lying on the ground its speed is zero. So in a split second, over a small, small period of time, the person went through a really, really large change in momentum. What that means then, that the force that had to change the momentum a lot over just a small period of time, the force had to be really, really large. In fact, so large that, that it was sufficient to break the, the bones uh, and, and other things in the body of the, of the person in such a way that the, the person just died. The force was so big that it killed the person. Uh, now, in the good scenario, there are going to be some firefight firefighters saving the, the people jumping from the windows. And how does that change the, you know, the situation? The person is still going to be going really, really fast coming, coming down from the building. So it's going to have a really, really large momentum. But, when it goes through that large change in momentum down here, the person still goes through a large change of momentum. I mean, its momentum at the end is going to be zero. What the trampoline or the blanket or whatever is being used by the firefighter, what it does is that it slows down the change in momentum. So the change in momentum is going to happen over a large period of time. Now this could happen, this scenario could happen, you know, this might be half of a second or a hundredth of a second, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But with the blanket, with the blanket, this time, or with the trampoline, that time could be a hundred times uh, larger than this time over here. Now, if, if the change in momentum is the same as before, if this time is a hundred times larger, greater amount of time, then the force, you know, which stops the person is going to be a hundred times smaller. And that could be sufficient sufficiently small so that the, the person actually survives, so that the person is alive after the firefighters are done with their job. So changing momentum with a large amount of, with a small force over a large amount of time can save your life if you're jumping down uh, of a building. Now you might say, I will never be in such a situation. but. I don't think I'm far from saying that all of us are in situations when we drive in a car and we have our seat belt fastened. Of course, we all have our seat belt fastened because we want to survive crashes. And how does a seat belt work? Uh, it slows you down as you are, you know, in a car accident, as you're being, uh, as you're continuing forward uh, when the car stops. The seat belt is going to slow you down, it's going to change your momentum uh, over a larger period of time than the windshield would. 
or the dashboard or the steering wheel or the seat right in front of you. If you hit the seat right in front of you, it would stop you, but it would stop you really, really fast. And the force by which the seat would be acting on you would be really large. The seat belt does the same thing. It stops you, but it stops you over a large, over a long time. What that does is that it makes the force that stops you, the stopping force, much smaller than the force that the steering wheel or the dashboard is going to, by which they are going to stop you. So uh, wearing a seat belt or how a seat belt saves you during a crash is also a direct application of the idea that impulse changes momentum. And all of us are in such situations sometime in our life. Uh, I am 30 years old and I've been through some car crashes. Fortunately, it's been small car crashes. But I was wearing my seat belt and I survived uh, and I don't have any lifelong injuries. I don't have to deal with that. So please wear your seat belt. Uh, the, the idea of, a, of an impulse changing momentum might save your life. Um, please do that. Wear your seat belt.